Good evening. This is Political Forum, Wednesday, January 29th, 2014. We welcome today as our guest, Alderman Natasha Holmes of the 7th Ward. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum, Alderman Holmes. Thank you for the invite. I'm Dartesia Pitts, a board member here at Can TV. This is a live, interactive program brought to you as a community service by Can TV. I encourage you, if you are a concerned citizen of Chicago, if you are a seventh ward um, resident, or if you just want to give us a phone call and say hello, to call in at 312-738-1060 and join in on the dialogue with Alderman Holmes and myself. Alderman Holmes, again, welcome. Thank you. You told me earlier this is your first time on Can TV Political it is. Forum. It is. It's always very painless and a lot of fun. Um, I know that you are, this is, you're in your first year um, in your seat as alderman on the city council. Can you tell and share a little bit about yourself with the audience? Okay, sure. Well, my name is Natasha Holmes. I'm alderman of the magnificent 7th Ward on the southeast side of Chicago. Um, I began my professional career in mid-2000 working for the DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference. I programmed federal transportation dollars for local municipalities. Um, I then went on to do more policy and research work at the Metropolitan Planning Council. And uh, after that, I wanted to see policy implemented so I started working with the Illinois Department of Transportation where I did a host of policy and administrative um, duties but um, I did get the opportunity to see policy implemented and then right before becoming alderman I worked at Metro Strategies which is a um, consulting firm and um, on February 13th I was appointed as alderman. Now you have an interesting road to being appointed how did you get appointed? She was sharing this with me earlier and I think that that is quite a story. <laughs> so I applied online. There was um, the, the previous alderman resigned her seat um, and the mayor decided to go through a selection process where he had a committee selected from a group of residents in the ward as well as some some city personnel and also um, the president pro tem at the time who was alderman Michelle Harris. Um, so there was a se selection committee gathered and you know I think about 65 people applied online maybe about 50 of those folks really went through the actual interview process and then there was a four-person um, finalist list that went to meet with the mayor. Well congratulations. Thank you. Um, where Where is the seventh ward? So the seventh ward begins roughly around 71st Street um, on the southeast side. I mean, yeah, southeast side of 71st Street. Um, and, you know, the end boundary and it jig zigzags a little throughout um, throughout the area, but the end boundary is, is around 107th and Bensley. So it really comprises four different neighborhoods. You have South Shore, South Chicago, Calumet Heights, um, and Jeffrey Manor. Okay. I've had an opportunity to talk to several aldermen when they come on political forum and all seem to have platforms or initiatives they like to spearhead. Do you have any of those that you would like to share to the audience today? Yeah, I think there are three interest areas that I'm really interested in working on and really beefing up more in, in 2014. And obviously education is one. I've, I've, I've convened previously all the school administrators um, in my area. I also have a seventh ward committee that's going to deal with education and also we'll have a youth council as a component of that. So high quality education is important to me. And, you know, I always like to say I've served on a local school council and I've also served on a charter school board. So it's to me, it's all about high quality education. Um, the second would be economic development, obviously looking at investment opportunities in our ward for infill and redevelopment and opportunities for new development. Obviously, there is a new road that's just been built um, and that's going to really leverage some opportunity um, for for the infill part of the ward um, to really take access and build up those corridors leading into that new development. And last but not least is really safety and wellness. Um, you know, I always say I'm not the police. I can't, you know, crime, I can't address crime directly on the front line because I'm not the police. But I do understand that my neighbors and constituents throughout the ward want to feel safe. And we live in one of the highest um, walkable transit friendly transit rich neighborhoods um, in the entire city and I think we should be able to take advantage of those okay now 
you um indicated earlier as well you have some of you have, well first you have a lot of great city property park park district property in the seventh ward i do and you were sharing earlier one of your favorites one of my favorites is rainbow beach and park obviously because first of all south shore in in the city of chicago is the only neighborhood that sits directly on the lake um and and that's a real prize and to have a park and a beach that's really at the end of of kind of the natural nexus of the lake, um, then it, it's a it's a great it's a great view. But I have some other great parks um, in in the in the ward as well, including Arthur Ashe Park. We have okay. Bessemer Park, um, and we currently still have Russell Park. So there are some great still neighborhood parks, but there are a lot of great things going on mm -hmm. um, at the facilities. Okay, we have a caller. Hi, caller. Good evening. How are you? Good. Uh, I live in the South Shore area. I have a concern about the excessive potholes that run from 71st and Exchange through 79th Street. And could you give me your address because I'm also concerned about becoming active as a community member. Oh, okay. So we do have a clip up here. My address is 24. Thank you for your call. My address is 2459 East 75th Street. My phone number is 773-731-7777. Um, let me just address the pothole issue. So, well, what you know, obviously we've had some some really strenuous weather conditions and salting the roads tends to eat up the asphalt. And uh, so you know, I guess we're trying to balance filling those potholes as much as we can, um, but also recognizing that because of the weather the way it is, we don't have the traditional devices that would normally be used in terms of asphalt because those plants are closed. Um, and so I think that as we get to where the weather has started to calm down and we move into spring, we'll be able to fill those on a more diligent basis and um, take, you know, make sure our roads are passable. She also wanted to know about getting involved, and I know we talked earlier about your ward nights. This is a perfect opportunity to let people know. Right. So every third Monday, the next one will be February uh, 24th. Um, I have ward constituent night in my office um, from 4 to 7.30, and we stay as late as we have folks come, and we start early if, if we can. Um, but that's an opportunity for a 15-minute meeting with the aldermen. But I do want to let all 7th warders know that we have seven 7th seven ward, com ward committees that you can also be in, involved in, ranging from housing to business to economic development and workforce um, to dealing with seniors um, and also the clergy. So there are other ways to be involved in. Um, I've just recently established the Community Engagement Council with those chairs, and so we're looking to beef up the um, folks who want to volunteer and be involved. So you can def that's another way to be involved in the 7th Ward as well. So make sure you reach out to Alderman Holmes. We have another caller. Hello, caller. Hold on one second. Let me turn my TV down. Okay. Hi, uh, Alderman Holmes. Hi. Excellent to see you using Can TV. How wonderful is that? Um, this is Jason. I'm from uh, the cadre of people on the We Mean Green uh, Community Gardens on 75th and Coles. Okay. Just want to say uh, again, congratulations for being on Can TV. One thing I'd like to, two things I'd like to ask. Uh, first thing is 74th and South Shore Drive. The CTA bus stop on the southbound side of the street mm -hmm. is in complete disarray. People have to jump off of the larger. Well, they actually do have to jump off of the jump there because they, they disembark into mud at the back door. I've already called the city and talked to them about it. I've called the CTA as well. There's a, there's a, um, a case number and everything. I can give that to you next time we see each other. Um, but as well, what are the plans for the uh, lakeside development down there? How are we going to maximize those TIF dollars that are coming out of there for the South Shore and uh, for the 7th Ward, really? And I'll, I'll get off the phone and uh, let you answer that question. Good to see you on Can TV. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your questions. I'm very familiar with the bus stop at 74th and South Shore Drive. So if you would please follow up with my office and give us the um, CSR number tomorrow so that we can follow up as well. Um, one, one, one problem with that bus stop as compared to other bus stops along, along South Shore Drive there is that that bus stop is right in front of someone's house and there actually is no stop. There's only a sign. So maybe we can work with CTA on 
how to address that issue. I, I'm very familiar with that bus stop. Um, and uh, with the lakeside development. So that's what I alluded to a little bit when I talked about a new road. Um, as most, most people are aware, we opened um, almost two miles of new road in Chicago. That never happens in major urban cities. So I'm very excited to have that happen in the seventh ward. Um, and what that, what that new road has done is really opened up 600 acres of, of property along the lakefront that was formerly the steel mill. So now the steel mill, um, U.S. Steel and um, a developer, McCaffrey Inf Interest, are working together to develop that property. Um, and what I said all along is I think that Lakeside is going to be great, a great development, a great opportunity um, for not just the 7th Ward and the 10th Ward, but the city of Chicago as a whole. But more importantly, I think right now, because we have a community that lives along the corridors that lead into that development. And what I really like to see is, is that development and that opportunity of the new road be accessed for 79th Street and 75th Street and 83rd Street to really build up the neighborhood and build up small business, small businesses and small business business opportunities and other retail opportunities that the community is willing to support. Great answer. If you are just tuning in, I am Dartesia Pitts, your host, and we are sitting down with Alderman Natasha Holmes here on Political Forum. I encourage you to pick up the phone and join in on the conversation and take advantage of having a, a conversation with the Alderman, 312-738-1060. I was about to go back into the Route 41, but I think that you um, summarized it. I just think it'll be great development, you know, ec economic development opportunity for the Seventh Ward and right. the City of Chicago overall. Right. Right. What committees are you sitting on with City Council? So I sit on the Committee on Committees, Rules, and Ethics, uh, Economic Capital and Technology Development, Human Relations, Health and Environmental Protection, Transportation in the Public Way, and Public Safety. Okay, so you got a busy, hectic a schedule. A busy huh? schedule. A busy <laughs> schedule of committee meetings. We have another caller. Thank you for calling in. Hello. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, Alderman, could you tell me a little bit about the annual Black History Month call house tours? Because I'm interested in uh, participating in that. I can tell you that I know that we have the date and information posted on my website and um, we'll definitely make sure it's in our news alerts. I, I saw the information. I passed it on to my staff. I don't know the details. I'll be honest. I don't know the details of what happens at those courthouse, um, at the courthouse tours. But just in, in my limited experience in serving on a jury, I think it would, I think it's going to be a great opportunity if you get the chance to go in and actually tour courthouse, see the jury rooms, see where they keep evidence. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think it. I think it's a great opportunity. All right, we have another caller. Hi, caller. Uh, hello. Hi. What's your question? My question is basically: is how she's gonna do fast her war, fast the game bangers, the drugs, and all the shooting in your ward, fast that's coming up for the summer of this year in your ward. Okay, that's a really good question. And, and like I said before, you know, I think the issues of crime and safety are something that are important to me. I definitely sit down with both of the committee. The, the seventh ward actually lies in two police districts, which is split at 75th Street um, from 75th Street on, on the north side of the street. Um, forward is a third district from 75th Street south and throughout the rest of the ward is the fourth district um, between you know, 71st and 83rd, we really have what what um, the police call like an impact zone where they are putting more resources in that area to address some of those issues. Um, we've had different community meetings. We are we are going to be this spring and summer starting up doing more positive loitering events where, you know, the community's out taking taking over neighborhoods and corners. I think the, the previous caller who called in and who's with the, the community garden on 74th and Coles, 75th and Coles, is a is a prime example of what can happen. We have several other community gardens, um, 76 and Saginaw. So we're trying to implement a positive image out of what really happens in the community because at the end of the day, there are more people in the community like me and my staff and my neighbors and, and like everyone who's watching the show tonight than there are people who are standing on the corner. And it's a matter of us asserting ourselves and making sure that we're doing the positive things that we need to do, like getting involved in block clubs, calling the alderman's office or calling 311 when when you see that there's a problem. I, I always tell people I feel like I'm the uh, TSA sometimes.
sometimes because it's like if you see something, say something. Um, and so that that's one of the things that we all have to do just as community members. Um, I want to let the audience know that Alderman Holmes, um, prior to the show, showed me her newsletter. And um, if you're on the mailing list, you get the newsletter or is this for everybody that it's in, in the community well it's available if you come into the office always for mailing purposes it goes to people in the ward um, and this is our first you know this is the second edition we're, we're trying to do them quarterly and make them really a, a source of information for um, everyone in the community uh, we wanted to do something different I have a great staff who you know really helps me and and you know make sure that we're, we're staying um, up to date and um, in the know and you know, wanting we wanted to make our newsletter different. That's why we have the crossword puzzle. But my favorite piece is, of course, the seven things you need to know because I'm all about seven all the time. Uh, so the seven things you need to know is, is a really great piece also. But the crossword puzzle we really did for the kids because we think that's a way for them to actually be engaged and to read the newsletter as well. It's a great, great way to keep, keep the community abreast of what's going on. Thank this you. this this was this was excellent. I, I, I actually I'm not in the seventh floor, but I but think you can that move my, there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my alderman needs to do something like that too. Great, great publication. So do you have any more calls? I thought we do. We have more callers. <laughs> Hello caller. Hi, um, thank you very much for taking my call, Alderman. Um, I was really hoping to speak with you because of your background with IDOT. Uh, my concern has to do with snow removal in the city and the budget. I understand that when we had that awful blizzard uh, two years ago, Mayor Daly sent $37.3 million to get all the cars off the lake, get the side streets plowed in two days so the city could get back to work. I understand that this year's budget is $16.7 million plus an additional $4 million in contingency, and it just seems like the winter has been so brutal, not because we've gotten these large amounts of snow at one time, but because the removal hasn't been um, what it should be, uh, just, you know, in terms of side streets and things of that nature. And I wanted to know, you know, moving forward, particularly with a potential pension crisis, if we're going to have more money to allocate towards snow, because my concern, frankly, is the city being brought to a standstill when we've only had five inches of snow a day or four inches of snow at a time. Okay, thank you for calling. Um, well, I think there are a couple of things to address there. I think that, you know, the mayor has been um, very pointed in saying that we will have enough snow to address the issue. Um, I, I, I hope that, I hope you're a resident of the seventh ward and I hope that, you know, your side streets were passable um, because I went around and I've, I've gone, done that through throughout the snow season, throughout the day, throughout the night and gone through and made sure, made sure that the streets were passable. Um, some of the issues with snow removal on side streets, I just want to address this, is that sometimes we take a truck in we go lay salt we clear out the snow but there's not enough traffic to really penetrate and really mash the snow down enough so that you know there's snow off the street completely um that's one issue but i think the mayor has been steadfast in saying that we will make sure that the streets are get clean i think in chicago that's something that has to happen that the streets have to be passable and you know i remember that blizzard from two years ago and by working at idot in the whole time that i worked for idot in almost eight years that was the one day that we were ever shut down um in the entire time and i've worked with them as an organization over my entire professional career and that was only time it ever shut down so I think that the city is going to make sure that doesn't happen anymore and I know they've put in place um, certain procedures with regard to Lakeshore Drive and shutting it down when it gets to a certain um, to a certain predicament or a certain level of slow or a certain level of danger so I think the city's you know taking that in stride and gonna make sure that happens and with the recent news about Atlanta and the south I am kind of happy to be a Chicago, in Chicago right yeah we can get through the <laughs> snow that's one thing I have learned we have another caller Hi, caller. I uh, guess. Uh, hello, Miss Holmes. Hi. Oh, uh, I wanted to uh, pity back off the other lady about the crime issue per se. Now, I am a resident that uh, I live in the South Shore community, and what I notice is, it, it, in the summertime, it's a uh, heavy. It's a whole lot of police officers that are on bikes that are in the park, and I wanted to know. Why, why, uh, it, instead of them being heavily infiltrated in the park, how come that they can't be in the community more so, whereas the parks? Because a lot of times, 
you know, it's not a lot of crime in parks. And it'd be a thousand police officers on bikes on the park, in the park area. But my, my thing is, you know, I've been victim of a crime in my area, but I never see them on bikes in the community. Mm. Okay, that's that's actually a good question. And, and just so you know, and I, I just want to reiterate this, that I do make it a point to meet with the commanders. I've already started kind of the, the pre-spring break and pre-summer conversations with regard to how we can handle that. I know for a fact in the 3rd District, which is where... Um, you know, a lot, a lot of South Shore is um, is contained within um, that that we are going to put more bikes in the neighborhood. And, you know, uh, the commander is going to have new recruits. So we're going to put bikes in the neighborhood as well as patrol on foot. The same thing is going to happen in, in the southern part of the ward as well. And, you know, what I think is, is, you know, when when constituents come and tell me these things, what I like to do is be able to have a further conversation about this. And, you know, I've talked to the commanders about this as well, and I plan on hosting a meeting with the community and the commander so there can be more frontline communication and they can really they they can see some of these issues because i think you know acknowledging the fact that there are bikes in the park but maybe they're not you know um they're not distributed in the right way would be something the commanders would appreciate knowing um and would appreciate getting that input from the community so stay tuned we'll be definitely setting up a meeting before summer hits really hard Okay. Are there any upcoming events in the war that you want to promote? Well, I would just say that currently I am partnering with the Center for Economic Progress. I'm hosting a 7th Ward Affordable Care Outreach Clinic, and we host that clinic currently at the Jeffrey Manor Library, which is located at 2401 East 100th Street. Um, we started this program in late December, obviously, to um, get people registered for uh, the Affordable Care Act and, and other health care opportunities out there. Um, this, this is going to continue through mid March. The clinic is open on Mondays and Wednesday Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I just like to mention one other event that kind of tags along with this is that I'll be co-hosting um, an Affordable Health Care Act informational session with State Representative Marcus C. Evans at Compassion Baptist Church on February 11th. And Compassion is located at 2650 East 95th Street. All right. I've had an opportunity um, to interview State Representative Evans, and he has also been on CAN TV, so that is great. You great. heard it. If you have any more questions about it, you can always contact Alderman Holmes at 773-731-7777 or my website at www.im7chicago.com. All right. If you're just tuning in, we're talking to Alderman Natasha Holmes of the Seventh Ward, and we have another caller. Hey, my question is about um, charter schools. Now, I'm just kind of wondering what your position is on, you know, whether they sort of serve neighborhood kids better, more efficiently, and um, if you would support, you know, establishing more charter schools in your ward. Thank you, caller. Thank you. That's a good question. Well, I don't know. Uh, well, let me just begin by again saying that, you know, I support high quality education. I also support school choice. But I have a host of neighborhood schools um, that, that I support as well and as strongly. I only have two two charter schools at this point. One of the charter schools that was approved um, at the board is, is planning a potential location in South Shore. They they don't have a location yet. Um, but, you know, I, I support my community-based schools. I think that school choice is not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't, I, I, I'm definitely one not one who wants to see resources taking from one pot to another pot. I think what charter schools offer um, to some parents is the opportunity to give, give your child a, a different approach to education um, and then further, it provides an opportunity to really invoke private sector funding um, into into this public function of, of educating children. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just I, I think that with the school closing issue, I think there were a lot of other issues involved when you talk about opening charter schools. Um, and, you know, this this was going on when I became alderman. Um, but like at the end of the day, what it's about to me is really high quality education. OK, this is a great segue if you had a high school student or an elementary school student and they're tuned in to CAN TV and they say, you know, I really want to, you know, follow Alderman Holmes' path in service, what kind of advice would you give to that student? 
Well, I would definitely say, you know what, stay on track. You know, there are great opportunities right now for you to get involved in your community. If not working directly with your, your alderman's office, there are other there are other agencies and other organizations that you can get involved in to really show that you want to effect change in your community. I look at my opportunity and my position as something that was totally unexpected. But when I look at the, the access that I have now to formulate change for my neighbors and my neighborhood um, and look at what that means, not only just for the seventh ward, but for Chicago as, as one of the major global cities in the world. And, you know, anyone who sees that vision in themselves now, I say push toward the mark. Um, that's that's really all you can do. Stay engaged, stay involved, volunteer when you get those opportunities. Because when you come back to your neighborhood one day to be engaged in more of the political process, people are going to remember the work that you've done and the help that you've given, given them. And so I think that, you know, starting out on that track right now and moving forward, you 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 have a great opportunity to engage yourself in in a public policy field in a, in a political field um, or just in government in general. Um, I I believe everyone should do some sort of government service at some point in their life. So um, take charge now. MLK says everybody has the power to be great because everybody has the power to serve. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and visiting us at Can TV. We welcome you back anytime. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you back on Political Forum. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week on Political Forum. Have Thank a great you. night.